Oh, and a great tackle there by Graham Roberts. And now it's Galvin. Spurs have got two to his right. But Galvin wants to go on his own. Villia. Still Ricky Villia. What an amazing run. And he scored. What an amazing goal. That's one of my uh, fondest memories of uh, Tottenham Hotspur, FA Cup 1981. And here we are, FA Cup Day. The magic starts and, suitably, where I'm living at the moment in Sydney, it's a really shitty day because FA Cup third round is always shit weather, no matter where you are in the world. I, um, I, I, I don't care how the world's gone. I still enjoy the magic of the FA Cup. It was, uh, it's always a big deal. Um, like the FA Cup final itself, it used to, the coverage used to start at bloody nine o'clock in the morning and you see like buses with teams and crowds and the build up and the build up slowly until kick off at three o'clock in the afternoon. It was, uh, it was amazing. And, and the FA Cup was our cup. It was, it was Tottenham's cup. We nearly, we, we won it every bloody year for a bit. It felt like it anyway. Um... So I've got great memories of it, and 87 was a great game, but I've, I've never watched it again. I, I can never watch that. But the, uh, the fairy tale of Gary Mabbott lifting the cup in 91, four years after, uh, yeah, well, we won't say what happened, uh, what, what happened there, but uh, to see Gary Mabbott lift the cup, it was amazing. And we're playing Portsmouth today, and I hope, I hope we don't sacrifice anything everything for the North London Derby. It's funny, I, I asked some people the other day, some Spurs fans, would you would you rather take um, going through to the next round of the FA Cup or, or beating Arsenal? And I'm on my own on this one, but I would much rather get through to the next round of the FA Cup. I mean, we play Arsenal twice every year and they, you know, you know we beat them and they beat us. But the FA Cup's the FA Cup. It's a magic competition. It's a magic competition. It's one of the good things about English football is you can get you in theory you could get together with your mates, make a football team, and play at Wembley. It, it's uh, it's an astonishing thing. If any 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 club uh, in in the land can play, and by the time the Premier League uh, has come in, a uh, couple of teams come in in the third round. A lot of these little teams have done so well to battle their way up to this point. You know the the last sixty four. And it's all up for grabs now. You win six, you win six games in a row in the FA Cup. You lift the FA Cup. That's all you got to do. Win six games in a row, and only one team can possibly do it. I always think this way. I think this way in the World Cup. Like if if a team wins seven games in a row, they've won the FA Cup. It sounds easy, maybe I don't know. And the FA Cup was always prestigious before days of Champions League. I'll give you a little walk down memory lane here, because. A lot of the time I was, uh, I was going to White Hart Lane, England weren't even eligible for European competitions. So uh, that, that was not on the card. So really, if you finished, it didn't matter shit if you finished second in the league or 10th, really. It's, I mean, you get minor bragging rights, but there was no Europe in play. Um, but when we did have Euro European competitions, it, I think they were much more prestigious. And the FA Cup was a very important part of that. Um, because it got your qualification for the Cup, European Cup Winners' Cup. Um, the three European trophies, in my mind, were all very, very prestigious. You had the, the European Cup, which maybe on paper sometimes could have been the easiest to win out of the three, because uh, there were less teams. But your, your, your entry ticket, the price to get into the competition, you had to be league champions. So you had to be league champions of your country and only then could you challenge to be the best in Europe. So uh, uh, an incredible achievement for the teams that did it. And I remember in the, uh, you know, there was, there was a time when it, English teams seemed to, seemed to win all the time. You had Liverpool winning, Nottingham Forest, Liverpool, Aston Villa. It was, uh, it was, a, it was a good time for English football. And then you had the, um, the UEFA Cup, which is like the second, third, fourth place team. So potentially you could be playing a match against this year's champions. Again, very, very prestigious uh, cup. And then the the, F, uh, the Cup Winners' Cup, so for, for each country's domestic winner. So for a premier, for a first division team, you know, I, on a side note here, I get pissed off when I 
I keep hearing things like, oh, record Premier League scorer. What, why, do we, why have we started all records since the Premier League start? I mean, all it is is a, a name change from First Division to Premier League. Why, 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 is, why haven't we got the records for top flight football in general? Anyway, so to win the, uh, to win the, uh, the European Cup Winners' Cup, you had to win your six games in a row in the FA Cup, and then you had to win another, I don't know, six, seven, eight, I mean, it was double-legged, to win the to win the European Cup Winners' Cup. So, again, a hugely prestigious trophy, and Spurs have won that one. Uh, we won two at UEFA Cups as well. So the FA Cup is always something very important to me. I know, uh, well, people say it's devalued. I mean, who is it devalued by? Is it devalued by fans, or is it de- devalued by clubs and owners? I had a quick look at the um, the team sheet for the 1981 third cup round, the, the third cup uh, third round proper, uh, and there were there were there was no such thing as bloody rotation in 1981. It was a first eleven playing Scunthorpe, which we won three two, so it was quite tight. So it was good that we played a first team. Um, now clubs seem to you to rotate and put much more precedent on on finishing fourth in the league than winning the FA Cup, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. But bear in mind, I come from that background where Europe wasn't as important um, and we weren't even in Europe for a lot of the years as I, as I was growing up. So so I, my, my perspective of it is very different. But um, the FA Cup, I think we've got to give it an all-out assault this year. We're in, uh, we've, we've got two chances of cups. We've got the uh, cause Premier League's gone. Uh, we've got the uh, Champions League, uh, which, you know, okay, uh, and FA Cup. So why don't we go for FA Cup? And, and there's, been, uh, there's been many times in, in history where winning a, winning a cup like the FA Cup or, or the League Cup has been a springboard to greater things. It's happened, um, well, I guess it happened with, with Tottenham winning the League Cup in the, in the early 70s and then going on to win the UEFA Cup, you know. Um, Man United under Alex Ferguson. It took him ages to get the, 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 his team going. I remember oh, a great afternoon when we smashed them 4-0 at White Hart Lane. <laughs> it was glorious, man. But um, their first win was an FA Cup. You've got to win something to get in the habit of winning. Um, I'm, I'm not sure uh, it's often... I mean, maybe Leicester's an example of, of going against the trend, but... It's not often you win a big trophy like, you know, the Premier League without some steps on the way. So I'm really hoping that we put in a good show against Portsmouth. And we, have, we look, we have got an opportunity to try some younger players. Pape Matlisar did really well against, um, who were we playing? Crystal Palace, yes. He had a great game against Crystal Palace. He, and I thought he had a very, very good World Cup as well. So there's him. Brian Hill, why not? You know, he's showing some... Uh, showing some development, maybe, I mean, for all his physique, maybe he's a guy that's just got to figure out, uh, given his his limitations, how he can still play the game of football, because he's definitely got skills, he's definitely got some awareness, he can see the game, uh, and football's a funny game, it's a broad old church, you know, you don't have to be six foot eight and built like a tank to play football, there's plenty of smaller players that's played the game, Aussie Ardiles, now I'm not saying he was a, an Aussie Ardiles, but there's an example you know, sometimes you can make up for your size in tenacity. Aussie was definitely one of those players. And I was very impressed with the way Hill was, he'd lose the ball and try and get it straight back again. You know, that's a really good attitude to have. Maybe some of the other players up front could take a leaf out of that book because when they lose the ball, I'm looking at you, Hum Ming Son, you tend to uh, not go for it again. But Son scored anyway, he's an attacker. Oh, well, don't really be hard then. So... You know, why not? Why not? Let's go for it. We don't have to choose between this game and this game. Well, you know, why don't we go all out and all in um, and, um, you know, put a win in for Antonio. And Antonio's having a rough time. He's lost, sadly lost another friend. That's two in recent years for him. And, uh, you know, my heart goes out to the guy. That's pretty tough. It's something that happens as you get older. You start seeing people around you disappearing. And it's uh, it doesn't get easy. You don't get used to it. So uh, I hope um, I hope um, Antonio has got some good support around with him, and uh, we we get a win for him at least on the pitch. Take care of that side of things. So let's go out and batter Portsmouth. Come on, you Spurs! <laughs>